Hi, I'm Dr. Laura Roberts, Books Editor-in-Chief for the American Psychiatric Association, and welcome to the APA Books Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about a wonderful book, Supervision and Psychiatric Practice, uh, that was edited by Dr. Sally Degolia and Dr. Kate Corcoran. Uh, Dr. Degolia is a psychiatrist and uh, a specialist in the treatment of mood and anxiety disorders. She is a clinical professor at uh, Stanford University's Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences and just a magnificent educator. Uh, Dr. Kate Corcoran is a psychologist also in the Department of Psychiatry at Stanford. She is a clinical associate professor who works really closely with the clinical psychology training programs and is uh, really just a phenomenal uh, colleague. And I'm really excited to share with you a little bit about uh, this wonderful book that they put together and just came out, uh, has gotten rave reviews already. I think it's going to be the definitive book on clinical supervision that exists in our field. So it's my great honor to talk with you today, both of you. And um, let me just say hello to you, Dr. Sally Degalia. Hello. And Thank you for having us. Yeah, great to have you. And to hello to you, Dr. Kate Corker. Thank you. Yeah. So what experience you had from psychology mm-hmm. to what would principally be a psychiatric audience? Yeah, I think it was, well, first of all, it was really um, a lot of fun to do this and to be thinking about some of the, most of it, there's so many commonalities between, obviously, psychology and psychiatry. Um, and then also thinking about some of the differences. And you know, one of our chapters was actually on what is it like to be a supervisor, a non-MD supervisor, when you're supervising in a residency program or other programs. Um, and I think it was helpful. I come from mostly a psychotherapy perspective, and so kind of bringing that into the book. And there has been more research and training on supervision from a psychological perspective. I think it's been part of our um, sort of the, uh, professional society has been pushing supervision training for a number of years and our graduate students are expected to learn supervision and it's something that's one of the competencies that's expected. So there's been a lot of thought and writing that's been done on that within psychology. So it was really helpful to kind of go back to a lot of that material and to be thinking about how some of that would apply um, within a psychiatry perspective. Um, but I learned so much in this process. And I was so grateful to have a psychologist, mm-hmm. and particularly you, working with me because you do bring a, a huge richness that was really, really helpful. So particularly around the Thank psychotherapy you. aspects. But having, having been in a lot of supervision um, workshops or whatever your mm-hmm. requirements are for a psychologist, that was just really, really helpful. It, I think it, it, the combination of us together really worked mm-hmm. well. Absolutely. So when you think about how you hope people will use the book, um, can you comment a little bit about that? Uh, Obviously, supervisors are people who wish to become supervisors, but how about learners who are at earlier stages of training? You know, what was your thinking about that? I think it is, I mean, it is um, accessible to a huge Mm -hmm. audience. You know, psychiatrists, psychologists, mental health professionals of all sorts, physicians, um, medical docs who are in um, um, collaborative care kind of situations. So, and we really touch on all these different issues. But I think um, it really, I think, is very useful from the beginner supervisor to somebody who's been supervising for years and hasn't actually read about in some ways, what they're actually doing, making it more explicit, mm-hmm. which I think is super helpful for them as mentors or teaching other, you know, their their junior faculty to become supervisors. I think it's helpful in that way um, for them and to just self-assess as supervisors. Uh, I think it's really helpful, and I hope that trainees read this book Mm -hmm. and they'll pick parts that that relate to them but supervision is so mystifying as a trainee you know they they have no idea what to expect and sometimes supervisors will explain it and often they don't and so for a trainee I think it just helps demystify Mm -hmm. the process and um, help them relax a little bit Mm -hmm. and recognize the value and, and the sort of 
the parameters of supervision and what they can expect. Yeah, and maybe a little bit more about what they, right, what they can expect, what the value will be in their career, mm -hmm. and what their, what their goals are. Mm -hmm. yeah. How they can enhance the supervision experience themselves, I think, by going and knowing what they want or trying to um, advocate for themselves in different ways. And so there are two chapters that were written specifically for the supervisees, and I think they're great chapters mm -hmm. that would be helpful. And I also think um, the book is structured in a way where advanced supervisors can pick it up and read one or two chapters and think about ways that they can enhance their own supervision or reflect on on their own supervision style. I found for myself when we were working on this that it, um, I felt like I was becoming a richer, better supervisor yeah. in the process, yeah. really thinking very uh, thoughtfully about the supervision process, about how to structure supervision. Um, very much also how to make sure it's a very active process where we're using role plays and videos and not just talking about cases but instead really bringing the material sort of live material into supervision and so I found that incredibly helpful just for myself and I hope that advanced supervisors will will feel that same way and certainly more junior supervisors I think will be able to read Sally's first chapter that goes through the whole supervision process and learn so much from that and then also just pick up a chapter here or there when they feel ready to incorporate yeah. these other ideas yeah yeah how did you pick the people that you did for the chapters? It's a pretty broad, remarkable group of people. And uh, really, some chapters are solo authored, and some clearly, <laughs> yeah, some clearly have the voices of many people mm -hmm. that you've brought together. And yet the entire book has, a, as you describe, a sense of flow, I would say, you know, this tremendous sense of cohesiveness in the accessibility, the visual, everything about it, I think it feels like a very cohesive project. But how did you select the authors that you did to prepare the chapters? That was another, I think, quite organic process when Sally and I would get together and think about these different chapters and try to think about some different experts in the areas and some of our colleagues who we knew did really wonderful work in these areas. We wanted to make sure there was um, a somewhat international uh, representation mm -hmm. as well, so mm -hmm. had people from Canada as well as the United States and, mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. And I, yeah, I think we just, you know, some sometimes I, I would ask another colleague who knew some people who were expert in certain areas and, and through that, but, um, and the other aspect is uh, we involved S certainly as co-authors, some trainees, and in fact, mm -hmm. a medical student um, wrote one of the chapters, which I was really excited about, obviously working with ex you know experts in, in that area who uh, co-wrote and were senior uh, authors, but so it was also great to see mentoring happening mm -hmm. within writing the book, but um, I think through our experience of we, we happen to know a lot of different people and tapped on mm -hmm. various people and, and frankly I, I was having been the first book I didn't know what it was going to be like to ask people and see you know would you please mm -hmm. write it a chapter people were really excited mm -hmm. they they were I mean I can't think of one person who said no uh, actually I can think of one person yeah, who said no <laughs> <laughs> well other than your chairman nudging you to do this book mm -hmm. which I have to acknowledge um, to the audience there was a little bit of a <laughs> nudge <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, why did you think that this particular topic or this particular book at this particular time would have some value to the field? Well, I have to say the nudging came at the right time because I, I have been really excited about thinking about teaching and how that is happens within supervision, which is such a huge area for mental health professionals and how we learn. And, you know, when you asked, it was... It was, it just hit at the right time, and I was really excited because I knew um, there just wasn't that much out there. I mean, there's been a lot of research on supervision and much more over the last couple decades, but mostly around psychotherapy supervision in the different areas um, of psychotherapy. And I've been really interested in supervision across the board in, as a psychiatrist. Um, how do we supervise in a psychopharm clinic or um, on the CL unit, in the inpatient units? And there's 
there may be some stuff out there. So there's certainly no books on that. And so this was very exciting to start to pull this all together. So, um, and, and very timely because there, um, there has started to be some workshops in these national organizations around supervision for psychiatrists. I know super, um, psychologists have mm -hmm. a different um, experience with it, but psychiatrists don't get trained in how to supervise, let alone obviously how to teach. But so mm -hmm. it was very exciting. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think one thing that was exciting for me when Sally came and approached me about collaborating on this book was the idea that it would be a really practical manual for supervision and not mm -hmm. just um, <coughs> talking about the more theoretical aspects, but really trying to understand how can we be the best supervisors possible, what are the strategies that will be helpful, and making a book that would be very approachable, I think, to our audience. So I thought that was very exciting. Yep. Yeah, no, it really, it really turned out beautifully. and. It was an ambitious uh, structure, and I love structure when I think about how to accomplish something in the form of a book. And you had eight parts. You had introduction, you had supervision formats, supervision techniques, clinical supervision venues, non-clinical supervision venues, mm -hmm. special issues in supervision, which is a long set of chapters, uh, legal and ethical issues. And faculty development. Mm -hmm. Right. And then there was just a final section. And so putting it all together. So can you just say how did you arrive at this rather remarkable structure mm -hmm. and including kind of some shadow issues, some issues that aren't at the front of mind for many practitioners? Honestly, I think it just fell out of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it really, um, I think because we wanted to do a broad-based book, we really just kind of looked at all the possibilities. And um, I, I don't know. It, mm -hmm. it didn't, it, it just seemed to kind of be evident. It did. And I think we had a lot of conversations about what it was like to be, uh, you know, supervisors ourselves and what were some of the issues that we faced and that when we spoke with colleagues that people talked about. And it really did feel like it came together quite kind of organically. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that reminds me then, I, I need to ask about your process. So you all talked together about the idea of the book, and then what did you do? I think this was the best part of the book, <laughs> actually. Um, Kate and I got to know each other very well mm -hmm. through this process. We did. <laughs> not having, I mean, really colleagues, but not really barely working mm -hmm. together. Um, and we met, or actually through mostly phone or, or um, uh, Zoom, uh, we met every single week mm -hmm. for a year for at least an hour. and just talked through mm -hmm. every aspect from the initial sort of um, vision of the book through, you know, the whole editing process. And it was it was actually really fun. And it was structured also, which made it just, we made mm -hmm. sure that we hopefully kept on time. And, um, and we spent a lot of time at the beginning trying to think about that structure. So yeah. the chapters that we wanted in the book, and then within each chapter, kind of what structure, how we wanted all of the chapters to flow, because it's really important to us that there be continuity and consistency across the book, and that it feel, you know, that p readers could pick up one chapter at a time, but also feel like it flowed. And so we spent a lot of time on those initial. We did, and I have to say, when we got, uh, you know, we still, though, didn't quite know how it was mm -hmm. going to flow because we hadn't written our own chapters. So mm -hmm. um, it wasn't until we actually got the first one or two chapters that we're like, oh, I see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was organic in mm -hmm. many different ways. Mm -hmm. But um, so we got better at we did. being clearer. And we read every single chapter um, many times. Yes. And we kind of split it down mm -hmm. the middle and then we'd be the primary whatever the chapters were, we were the primary, but we both read each and and would come together and talk through each mm -hmm. point. And, um, yeah, it was quite a process. It was a process, and it was fun. Yeah. Much of the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but I do, I, I do <laughs> recall being told that once, this is certainly my first book, but when you write a book that it is like delivering a baby. Now, I have to say it wasn't quite the same, but 
it was it was amazing. I mean, I remember the day we I brushed off. I had yeah. the manuscript to UPS, and it did feel like we were sending our baby mm-hmm. away. And <laughs> of course, I didn't have the address where it was going. I had to text <laughs> Kate, but mm-hmm. anyway, it was fun. Yeah. So what was it like to bring the expertise in? Um, Well, this book is called Supervision and Psychiatric Practice, and the subtitle is Practical Approaches Across Venues and Providers. Uh, It's written and edited by Sally DeGalia and Kate Corcoran, and I just think it's a beautiful book. I want to thank you for this contribution to the field, and I can hardly wait for what's next. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we can't wait either. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. A a real pleasure to Mm -hmm. do it. That's great. Perfect. 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 Absolutely perfect. I think actually what's interesting is that you guys ended up covering um, collaboration and not to be scared to do your first book, in addition to just the content yeah. around this great book. Yeah. So, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, see, it was, I mean, really, truly, really, it was a great process. Yeah. So I think it was, um, yeah, over, but yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Our host is Dr. Laura Roberts. She is the Catherine Dexter McCormick and Stanley McCormick Memorial Professor and Chairman of the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at the Stanford University School of Medicine. She is also Editor-in-Chief of the Books Program at American Psychiatric Association Publishing. Recording engineering and music by Willa Roberts, coordinating producer Kyle Lane McKinley, executive producer Tim Marnie. This podcast is made possible by the generous support of Stanford University. We are a production of American Psychiatric Association Publishing, John McDuffie Publisher. Be sure to check out other APA publishing podcasts, including AJP Audio and Sex Services. We are available across all podcast platforms, including Stitcher, Google, iTunes, and Spotify. To purchase copies of this book or other books by our guest or host, please visit www.appi.org. That's A-P-P-I dot org. If you'd like to contact us, drop us an email at bookspodcast at psych.org. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and thank you for listening.